Hello everyone and a warm welcome to our podcast. I am Sanskriti Tripathi from Jaipuria Institute of Management and Law. Before we begin with this podcast, let me promise you that today's podcast is surely going to be a legendary piece. Let's welcome Dr. Dipankar Chakravarti, Director Jaipuria Institute of Management and Law. Welcome sir, welcome to our podcast. Thank you very much. Thank you for getting me here to speak to you. Thank you. So through this podcast we wish to provide an insight to our viewers on the role of artificial intelligence in the field of education so as somebody who has been the part of this education fraternity for so long and also the one who holds 30 plus years of experience in the field of artificial intelligence and machine learning how do you see ai in education yeah ai is actually when i did my phd way back in early 2000 I did not know that I am creating a monster that's going to come out of the back of soul and going to really revolutionize the entire industry not only education but every other aspect of life. Now having said that when you ask me this question about education and now if you really look at it from a very you know optimistic perspective of artificial intelligence and education uh, this will be a large scale you know convergence of these two happening at some point in time uh this will be some kind of an overlap of artificial intelligence and education and if i really look at again very positively the whole thing artificial intelligence will possibly take over a lot of the kind of mundane that we as educationists really work around to give you an example to write a code we spent hours and hours together to write a code but today you have artificial intelligence that generates this code so fast that you really don't have to worry about it but what's important is that what it would bring along with it is the ability to think we may possibly go back to the socrates area it 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 is old you know when we you know can think more and let the mundane be done by the machine and that's going to happen so the bag the cat is out of the bag is going to happen in any way but let's take it with this you know optimism that this is definitely going to revolutionize education in a big way absolutely sir isn't it more about the way we use it precisely uh it's 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 kind of a tool in your hand you need to know how to use that tool and uh, if you know how to use the tool you can make wonders out of it So now it's more important to learn the right ways to use it. Precisely, precisely. I mean, it's 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 as I said, it's kind of a tool, and uh, you need to know how to make the tool your slave, and not become the slave of the tool. And what's more important, you know, there's a lot of conversation that happens around, which talks about uh, artificial intelligence is going to take over mankind and so on and so forth. I call it a myth. But yes, what is the reality is that artificial intelligence will not take over people. But definitely, you know, people who do not involve with artificial intelligence, they will be eaten up by artificial intelligence. So it's very important that we understand how to create artificial intelligence as our slave and we remain the masters of it. that's important to understand because everywhere these days a debate is going on that ai can replace humans in an organizations so how do you see it and what are your suggestions to the young leaders coming ahead certainly it will not as i told you already that you know artificial intelligence is a tool and we need to play the game very well but what is important is we cannot stay away from this artificial intelligence as i rightly said that artificial intelligence will not take over mankind it does not have the ability provided we don't become a slave to the artificial intelligence so please so when you decided to go on this career path and decided artificial intelligence and machine learning as your dawn did you ever anticipated a profound transformation ai could bring to this world which we are seeing right now The first thing is first you know when I got into artificial intelligence my friends would joke that why do you need an artificial intelligence have you run out of natural intelligence so having said that when I did my research way back early in 2000s 
on artificial intelligence. I think you know, we really anticipate that this is what is going to happen to uh, the whole world of artificial intelligence. We were actually trying to work on some algorithms, but those algorithms have taken such huge shape today that it is also getting prone to a lot of misuse. You would have heard about deep fakes. You would have heard about a lot of you know things that's happening around it. Well, that's where it comes the question of the ethical use of artificial intelligence. It's very very important to understand that. But unless we have a code of conduct to be able to use artificial intelligence, I think we will be somewhere you know subservient to the entire concept of artificial intelligence. Yes, sir. Now we can understand this that the ethics. code of conduct and every domain we talk about goes hand in hand so ethics and code of conduct are the part of the every area we talk about be it be engineering management law isn't it sir it is certainly certainly code of conducts are only a guidelines that help you to think in a particular manner but the truth is that we need to be responsible enough to understand what is good for us and what is bad for us what is it that can do a lot of development for us and what is it that can harm us in many many ways and you may see some of the ill effects of artificial intelligence we need to be responsible citizens we need to know how to use technology in a responsible manner that's that's the mantra so you have a great experience and knowledge of engineering and right now you are handling a b school so these days we are seeing the inclination of management students Towards learning artificial intelligence and machine learning, how do you see as an engineer and also a management graduate? You see, there has to be a little bit of artificial intelligence in everybody's life today. To an extent that my housewife, they have to be also looking at it, artificial intelligence. You can't think of a device today which does not work on artificial intelligence. If you have an, you know, immense amount of, you know, reliability and, you know. You depend on your mobile phones. That's an artificial intelligence device. So, if you really look at it, it's nothing. There's the boundaries between engineering and management and politics and you know cooking. It is it is too blurred these days. You need to have this technology and you need to use this technology in some form or the other. It has to happen. You can't live without it. Without it. So this is now a myth that AI and ML is just only about engineers. Now even a management graduate can excel in this field. Certainly, all that you need is certain basic first principles, and everything that you do, whether it's an engineering or management or whatever that you're trying to talk about, it's all based on first principles. And what are these first principles? The first principle number one is to be able to communicate, not in a language. Language is only a mean. And the second, that is to have an analytical ability to be able to think through, to be able to put your thoughts, articulate those thoughts in a much more logical and a synchronized manner. That's what is the aim of you know that you need to play. So engineers, management, it's all it's all this. Yes, it's really important to hear it from somebody who is an engineer. That's really important. Certainly, as I say, man, I mean, and. Artificial intelligence is going to be a part of everybody's life, Absolutely. irrespective of whether you come from humanities or you come from commerce or you come from business or you come from engineering. You can't do without it. The way we could not do a few years ago with Google, Google was definitely not meant for any specific people. It was meant for mankind at large. Similarly, artificial intelligence is going to be something for the large masses. You can't specify that it's only for engineers or it's only for math students. Yes, sir. So every time we as a student meet you, every time we meet you, you're full of energy, enthusiasm, and positivity. Please share with us your mantra of this positivity and enthusiasm. Ah, that's that's interesting. It's you who bring that energy to me. You know, when I be with you all, uh, I start feeling young, and when I start feeling young, my wife loves. Me. and uh, that's the truth uh, the young generation has so much of an energy that we can really vibe from and it's infectious the way you spread your positive energy to all of us is something which we take in 
and we feel really energetic about it. And that's that's the whole mantra. There's no specific mantra as such. Yeah, I mean my interactions with all of you. I mean the other day you would have possibly seen me dancing with you with equal fervor with which you were all were participating. And you you pushed us to do that. Thank you, sir. We are really blessed and thank you so much for carving us so well, not only just a good leader or a good student or just somebody who can serve good in an industry, but being a good human as well. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you very thank much. You, sir. I wish you all the best.